Blame Truth here, the COD father himself, bringing you another video. You're gonna notice this is Titanfall 2 gameplay, it's not Modern Warfare 3. Thank you to my gameplay guy, Sefi, for this. But, uh, I'll be honest with you guys, I, I always try to be honest with you, I do not want to play Modern Warfare 3, like, at all. At least not right now. I'll give it a try later after I get some beers in me, and I'm not joking there. Uh, if you guys could like this, if you're okay with just not MW3 gameplay, just drop a like on the video so I know. If you really want MW3 gameplay, I will force myself to play it for the channel for you guys. Uh, you know, just, just leave a comment below with what you want to see, what you don't want to see. You can dislike the video if you don't like Titanfall or just say, hey, Titanfall sucks, whatever. But I, I truly hope you understand, as someone who has been complaining about this series for the past five years, how just tired I am. It, you know, I, I played Modern Warfare Roman numeral 2, and I played Vanguard, because I always like to play what I'm talking about, but I, I, I'm just exhausted, man. I'm just so fucking tired. I, I can't. I feel like I'm literally Jack in The Shining, which is why I gave you that opening clip there, because I, I feel like I'm going insane. But I, I don't think I'm the only one that doesn't want to play Modern Warfare 3, because... I, I took a look at the numbers, and guys, this is, this is really, really bad. A few years ago, when COD Vanguard came out, uh, it was revealed after a few months that it was the worst-selling Call of Duty since, I believe it was Call of Duty 4, back in 2007. And Activision made all the excuses in the world. They said that the player base doesn't like World War II, and I, I think they blamed, like, the fact that... It was a rush development cycle. I think they actually revealed that, <laughs> funnily enough. Oh, they only reveal that stuff when the game does poorly and it's a failure in their eyes, but they viewed it as a pretty big flop, uh, comparatively speaking. It still made money. It still was like one of the top selling games of the year, but uh, it, for them, it was a flop. And I, I think we're going to see round two of that because good God, man, the numbers, as Scott Steiner once said, the numbers don't lie, Smojo. I'm not sure if anyone's even going to get that reference, but uh, look up Scott Steiner math on YouTube and you'll understand. The numbers don't lie. They look really, really bad. But, um, guys, I'm going to get into those numbers after a brief word from this video sponsor who makes delicious food and has good numbers as far as macros, calories, protein, and stuff like that goes. Factor. So, be right back. Today's video is sponsored by Factor. So... Call of Duty season is upon us, and whether you like the game or not, you're probably going to check it out, and you are probably going to grind a little bit on it. And a good way to save a lot of time, and not cook, and not order food that's going to show up to your door cold, and you have to pay a 50% tip premium or something like that, is to get Factor. So Factor's food is fresh, it's never frozen, it's delivered in a refrigerated box, and in just two to three minutes in the microwave, you can get a delicious, hearty, nutritional, healthy meal. So one of my favorite things about Factor though, aside from the fact that it cooks up in two to three minutes, is that the calories and the macros are spot on. I get the calorie restricted options and the high protein options, but if you're not into that, they also have vegan, vegetarian, ketogenic, and even gourmet options. Uh, not only that, but they have these amazing smoothies. Strawberry banana is my personal favorite, and they also have cold pressed juices made from natural ingredients. You really can't go wrong with Factor. So guys, head to Factor75.com and use the code CODFATHER50 for 50% 50 off your first Factor box. Again, that's Factor75.com or just click the link below and use code CODFATHER50. All right, guys, welcome back to the video. Let's just get right on into the numbers. What you're seeing is the Modern Warfare 2 subreddit members, 2.9 million i've i've kind of like <laughs> it, it always shocks me to see that number because i feel like it's botted I, I feel like it's not legit because the subreddit was dead I, I think it just had a lot of people hyped up and then they were disappointed so they didn't actually stay on the subreddit and they didn't bother becoming a non-member or whatever unsubscribing whatever but uh modern warfare 2 i mean it's probably the most hyped call of duty of all time truth be told and um it had a lot of subreddit members and even games like cold war i think had it in the upper hundred thousands like eight hundred thousand or so uh vanguard as as crappy as that one was just for comparison um had about a hundred or so thousand over a hundred thousand subreddit members so let's check out comparatively speaking modern warfare 3. 52.6k members as of today, a day after launch. 
That is nowhere near 2.9 million. And you might be saying, well, that's not very fair because, uh, you know, you're comparing day one to like the end of days for Modern Warfare 2. And you'd be right. So I wanted to go back and compare it to Sledgehammer's last game just to show you how poorly this game is actually doing. And for those saying like this doesn't matter, we've actually done a lot of videos on this channel showing that yes, the subreddit numbers do correlate to the Call of Duty sales. It's not rocket science. There is a correlation. It may it may go up and down, you know, depending on a few factors or whatever, but there's a 100% of correlation, and we've proved that. So check this out. Let, let's compare day two of Vanguard to day two of Modern Warfare 3 here. The subreddit numbers, I mean. Here we go. 46.347K on November 6, 2021, which is a day after Vanguard came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing Vanguard numbers here, guys, on the subreddit, which is is honestly kind of scary because after Vanguard came Modern Warfare Roman numeral 2 and Warzone 2, which were hyped to high heaven. So technically speaking, we should have more players than ever. We should have more players than ever that are interested in this game. And maybe you're one of those just apologists, those Call of Duty apologists that, that fill up my comment section every goddamn year. It's making up excuses, saying, Well, you need to be nice to the devs. The game was made in a pandemic. How about you just don't make the game if it's rushed, or there's a pandemic, or people are crapping their guts out with Ebola, or people have Crohn's disease, and, and they're also crapping their guts out, or maybe they've just eaten McDonald's and they're crapping their guts out. I, I don't know. Maybe just don't. Maybe just don't release a game every year and give the devs time to breathe it's rare i stick up for the devs i don't think the devs overall for any of the studios now are very talented especially since david vonderhaar left sorry prove me wrong if those words hurt your feelings i hope those words if you're a dev watching i hope those words light a fire under your ass and you actually bring the heat or if you can't bring the heat because the higher ups won't let you or something like that then leave and go to another studio and make a better game anyway uh yeah maybe you're one of those people those caught apologists that say like this doesn't matter this this means nothing like i i want to see player numbers and I, I can show you player numbers i've showed you player numbers on steam all year long and people will also make excuses and say it's just steam bro it's just steam bro it doesn't matter like that's the only thing we can track we don't have the hard numbers and i'm not going to report on anything else other than the hard numbers i'm showing you hard data with the subreddits i'm showing you hard data with the steam player numbers that's all i can give you because that's all i have but there is there is 100 a correlation and we've proven it past videos and you can just look at the subreddit numbers and look at the sales for vanguard modern warfare roman numeral 2 cold war etc and see that yes there's there's definitely a correlation so Let's get in to the next part, though. The Steam numbers. Oh, this is gonna get this is gonna get interesting. Here you go. On a Saturday, midday EST. I'm making this video around 4 p.m. EST on a Saturday. We have 120,000 people playing with a 24-hour peak of 177,000. Here's the issue, the all-time peak, and this is, guys, let me reiterate here. This is Modern Warfare Roman numeral 2, this is Warzone 2, this is Modern Warfare 3. Like, this is all three games. So there are people in this statistic that didn't even buy Modern Warfare 3. There are people in this statistic that don't even play Warzone 2, which is free to play, and they're still on Modern Warfare 2. This is counting three games in one. These are juggernaut titles, all three of them. 120,000 players with a 24-hour peak of 177,000. That 488,000 peak was when Modern Warfare Roman numeral 2 and Warzone 2 were new and they just came out. So that, that's a pretty big number to beat. And then that number's dropped significantly. I, I've covered it all year. It's dropped like 85% or something. Not even from like the peak even, but just from the average players per month. So that's how many are playing right now, which is pretty, that's pretty poor. Let me just show you the comparison screenshot I got here. I'm going to show you all throughout the year, Modern Warfare Roman numeral 2 and Warzone 2, how it performed. Here we go. 
As you can see, the average players in November, when the games first came out, uh, were 223,000. So already, they're behind over 100,000 players from that. The next month in December, 178,000. And then January, we see the biggest drop. You know, like, like they lost like 75,000 players, 42% of the player base just gone by January. I was one of them, you know. But as you can see throughout the year, I mean, it's just not very good. And the peak players, I mean, the peak players lasted, it was pretty comparable to this launch in February when the game lost a ton of players already. As you can see throughout the year, the game just continued to bleed players up until October. And then I think the October event actually brought a lot of people back because from what I understood, it was a good event. Usually their Halloween events are pretty good. Too bad that the games are on their way out. I remember Cold War's Scream Deathmatch event with Ghostface. That that was fun. That was that, that's like the only fun I've had on Call of Duty in the past five years. I'm not I'm not making that up either. And I think we have to factor in uh, the beta as well. I think the beta really helped with that because it was all the same launcher. But yeah, I mean. Now we have 120,000 average players, which is about 60,000 more than this, a day after launch. And you know that number is going to drop like a brick in the coming days. Guys, I, I don't know, man. I I've seen so many people in my comment section already say they've refunded it. I've seen so many people in my comment section already say, like, this game's boring. It it it's, it's just a recycle job. And... Here's the thing, and I, I, I'm going to say this, and it's going to piss off some people, I'm sure, but I, I really don't give a fuck, man. I don't care who I piss off on YouTube anymore. I'm going to say what I want to say because I've, I've always done that, for better or for worse. Uh, here's the thing, man. There, there's really no reason to buy MW3, even if you skipped MW2, because this game, Modern Warfare 3, I'm, I'm saying it right now, guys. This game is just a worse Cold War in pretty much every way. When I was playing Modern Warfare 3... I'm like, wow, this is this this is kind of like Cold War, except MW2 maps. And if you really love the OG MW2 maps, and I mean really love every single one of them, then great. You're, you're going to like the game, probably. The issue I have is that half the maps, half the MW2 OG maps, are horrible. They're not good. This is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. But I think in time, especially this year, if you stick with this game, you're going to agree with me. These maps are not it. Yes, there are some good ones. There's High Rise. There's Terminal, which I personally don't like, but a lot of people like. Terminal, High Rise. There's, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. Uh, uh, there, there, there's a few more. There's a few more good ones, right? But most of the maps are not very good. Wasteland, not very good. Derail, not very good. Underpass, not very not very good. And I, I'm being very, very, uh, what's the word? I'm, I'm being very positive when I say not very good. I, I would say most of these maps are bad. Estate? Bad. Estate was one of the worst maps I've ever played. In fact, up until I think Modern Warfare 2019, uh, it, <laughs> it was like one of the worst. I consider it the worst map ever. It's just a terrible, terrible map in my opinion. But uh, regardless, guys, these maps just really aren't it. Overall, I, I don't think they are. I, I think, seriously, Cold War has better maps overall. I, I just prefer Treyarch's map style. Hate on me all you want, but I don't think you can find a better map than, like, Raid or Slums. I, I just think Treyarch makes better maps. They always have, really, from, from back, from World at War. That's where I started with Treyarch. From World at War. To now, I just think Treyarch knows how to make maps. In fact, I wish Treyarch just made the maps for every single Call of Duty. They seem to know what they're doing. All of their maps, even their DLC maps, are pretty well received overall. They've had a few blunders like Arsenal Sandstorm and Black Ops 4, but that's just because the, nobody could see. You know, Arsenal is a fine map. But um, I just prefer, I just prefer Treyarch's maps. I don't know. Infinity Ward makes the worst maps, and then Sledgehammer somewhere in the middle, but. Guys, I, I don't know, man. Just playing on these MW2 OG maps just with doors added? Why, why bother? And why, why bring back the doors anyway? You're promoting this fast-paced gameplay. You're promoting this, like, a movement or whatever. Why even have these indestructible doors? What is the point? Cold War didn't have doors. Cold War had 150 health. Cold War, in my opinion, had a much more simple, better gunsmith system. I mean, it told you the stats straight up. 
had more weapons with personality. All these weapons just kind of blend together now. And uh, how you unlock stuff was better in Cold War. There, there was no challenge system, which is bugged, by the way. Yeah, very, very bugged. But that's another video for another day. Uh, I don't know. It just feels like a worse Cold War. Modern Warfare 3, I mean. And here's the kicker to all this. Here's the kicker. Cold War still sucks. <laughs> I'm not playing it either. Cold War sucks. It just sucks the least. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I don't really know what to do other than to bring you guys Titanfall 2 gameplay while I crap on Modern Warfare 3 because the game just came out and I, I don't want to play it. So it's either going to be Titanfall 2 or, or my Dead by Daylight gameplay or something. I, I literally I literally hopped on last night to play. I booted up the PC, wanted to play, and then I'm like, you know what? I don't want to play. I don't want to play at all. And then I just played some Dead by Daylight with my girlfriend instead for the next two or three hours. There's this lack of, like, what's the, what's the term I'm looking for? There's this lack of coziness. It's a weird thing to say, isn't it? But... You ever play a game or watch a movie and it's just cozy you don't have to really think too much and it's just it's just something that feels familiar and it feels good these games aren't cozy anymore they're frustrating they're complicated the ui needs its own tutorial you have to update modern warfare 3 whether you bought it or not and it's like 100 gigs i saw people complaining about that the games are not cozy anymore you have to play like it's mlg dallas as a solo player because none of my friends bought this crappy game and i don't blame them it just feels like there's no point why why and it's funny in true call of duty fashion we've been complaining that you don't get anything for actually winning in call of duty you just don't so they're like okay we'll put essential gameplay mechanics and gameplay features and attachments and kill streaks and all that stuff behind challenges and you have to win to get armory credits to unlock stuff that's not what i want i want some cod points for winning just some stuff like that some skins i don't want like actual things that help me win in the first place and then add to the fact that wins and losses aren't controlled by me really it's all up to the spmm look at nero's last video to see what i'm talking about guys i'm out of time i hope you enjoyed Rate, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Do some parting advice.